Gradle 7.4 got released on Tuesday, and since then I've been trying out the new features. And there are three features that in particular I think are important for Java developers like you and I. So stick around to learn how to make the most of these features in your own project. And as always, we can go to gradle.org slash releases to check out the latest release and scroll down and we'll check the release notes for 7.4. First things first are the upgrade instructions. We can switch to any version of Gradle we want using the Gradle wrapper task. Gradle will make the necessary changes to the project, which you can then commit into version control. So the first new feature here that I think is interesting is the ability to generate a single report for tests from multiple projects. So in a multi-project structure, previously when you run a test task, it would generate a single report per sub-project, and now we've got a task which can aggregate them all together. Now this is provided by a test report aggregation plugin, and to show you how it works, I've downloaded the sample project provided by Gradle. So within this project, we've got list utilities and application. Application is what's known as the distribution project, as it's the main application which will get published, whereas list and utilities are dependencies of application. And that's important because we only want to apply the test report aggregation plugin to the distribution project. And that's exactly what's happened here. So if we go into the build.gradle.kts, the Kotlin build script, we can see at the top we've got this test report aggregation. And one thing that you can do is set up a task dependency from check to test aggregate test report, which is the new task that this plugin exposes. So that means that when we run Gradle W check, it's going to run all the tests in all the sub projects. So if we look at one of the sub projects here, utilities, inside build reports, we've got the HTML test report for that single sub project, org.gradle.sample.utilities. If we go into the application sub project, the distribution project, and look inside build, reports, tests. We've got a new directory, unit test, which is the aggregate report. And we'll check out the HTML report here. And we've got the combined results of the three tests from the three different sub projects. Two things to note here are that firstly, this test report aggregation plugin uses the project dependencies to work out how to combine all these tests together. So in this case, we've got two project dependencies on a list and utilities, and that way we get the combination of all three sub-projects. The second point is that this plugin works in combination with the JVM Test Suite plugin, which was recently released. And that means that if you've got, for example, different suites of tests like integration tests and unit tests, then this test report aggregation is gonna play nicely with that. If you want to learn more about writing integration tests using the JVM Test Suite plugin, then you can check out this video which goes into a lot more detail. So back to the release notes here, next up is kind of similar plugin, it's the Jococo code coverage for multiple projects. So if you're not familiar with Jococo, it's a plugin that generates a report giving you code coverage statistics. So it tells you what percentage of your code has been covered by tests. So just like the test report aggregation, the Jococo report aggregation will combine all the reports from all the sub-projects. Now I've spent quite some minutes trying to make sense of what might be the most complicated sentence ever. It's right here and it says, when this plugin is applied to a Java project, Gradle will automatically create an aggregated code coverage report for each test suite with code coverage data from a compatible test suite in every project that the Java project depends on. No, I still don't get it. If it makes sense to you, let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, practically speaking, I think this plugin is a lot easier to understand. So once again, I'm using the project provided by Gradle. In a similar way, we've got a list, utilities, and application distribution project. And we've got the Jococo report aggregation applied to this distribution project. And also we've got the task dependency from check. So when we run check, it's going to run the new test code coverage report task from this plugin. So let's try this out. So within application, build, reports, Jococo, we've got this test code coverage report and we've got an HTML version here. 
and this has got results for all three sub-projects. And you can see the coverage statistic here, we've got 12%, 87%, 92%. And if you wanted to send this information off to a tool like SonarCube, we've also got the XML report as well. And I've saved what I think is the best to last for you, which is a new promoted feature of version catalog. So version catalogs was an incubating feature for a while, and now it's been promoted to a stable feature, which means that it's accessible without having to specifically enable it within your build. And version catalogs is a feature that allows you to externalize your dependency group name and version into a format that's really easy to reference in different sub-projects within your build. And I think the main advantage of this is going to be that it reduces duplication. So you're not having the same dependency group name and version defined in multiple places. But best if I show you and then you'll see what I mean. So here we are in a good old Spring Boot project. And we've got a load of dependencies, some of which are Spring Boot dependencies, some of which aren't. Now with a Spring Boot project, if you apply what's known as the Spring Boot plugin bomb platform, that's a bit of a mouthful, but if you apply this line here, it means that you don't need to specify any versions when you specify other group and name dependencies. All those versions are provided by this platform. And the other way you can achieve the same effect, which you might have seen, is using the Spring Dependency Management plugin. So this is a simple single module project at the moment, and we're going to extract all this dependency information out into the settings.gradle.kts file, which currently just has the root project name defined. So to use a version catalog, we call Dependency Resolution Management, and then Version Catalogs, and then we create a specific version catalog and the standard seems to be to call it libs. And then we can define libraries. So for example, with H2, we define an alias, which is how we're going to refer to this particular library. And then we provide the group name and version like we would in the build script. Now within the build script, we can reference the H2 database dependency simply with libs.h2. And I'm going to fill in all the other dependencies using this cheat sheet I made earlier. And this is how it looks with all the references updated. And it's worth pointing out that the library definitions we've included in the settings.gradle.kts file are available from any sub-project. So hopefully you can see how powerful this would be if you needed to use any of these libraries again in a sub-project. You just use the alias to reference the dependency. Now, I'll be honest, there's quite a lot more to this version catalog feature than what I've just showed you here. For example, there's a different way you can declare your version catalog using what's called Toml syntax. If you haven't heard of Toml before, don't worry, I hadn't either. It's basically like a souped up key value list. So it's just a way of declaring the dependencies in more of a text style format than code. But if you want to read more about any of these features or any of the other features, because there are loads of other features and bug fixes Team Gradle have made, then I'll provide the link in the description. And I just want to say thanks to the Gradle team for putting out this release. And if you also want to show your support, then give this video a like and I'll be sure to pass on your best wishes. Thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next one.